got a male night jar. Well, I think it's a male. Have to check. So, obviously on migration back to somewhere in the sub-Sahara. Notice it's got a ring on. So, uh, fingers crossed, this might be quite, something quite interesting. So it's a, my first re-trap, or control. So is that one right, you okay. caught? It's almost certainly one that I've caught before, or possibly some other ringers nearby. So I've got to get a right down the ring number. I've got some of his hairs on the ring, so it's going to take a little bit of time to read it, I think. So. Quite unusual, not too many of them actually get um, recaptured. So um, it's quite interesting, that does suggest that this is a, a local breeding bird. Probably um, from over the hill towards Ramston. No, it's a male due to the white spots on the primaries. And also uh, white spots on the outer tail feathers. Characteristic. You often see these white flashes as they fly past. So uh, next thing we have to do is age the bird. And uh, what I tend to look for is in the secondaries, if there's any telltale that's arrow markings, which suggests it's a young bird. Um, as it should be, there's no none of these older feathers here. So this is definitely an older bird that's bred somewhere in the local area. So what does he eat? Moths, lots and lots of moths. In fact, on a night, um, they can eat so many that they store their supply in a big lump in between their legs, often up to a golf ball in size. <laughs> I Wish I could one. do that. Yeah. I'm going to wait to see if he's got enough fat on him to get to Sub-Sahara. Recent studies actually suggest that these guys go somewhere south in the co of the Congo. And do we have any idea how long it'll take to get there? Um, less than a month, guessing. 67.4 grams. Almost two years ago to the day. Uh, just a few little things about it. On one of its claws here, it's got uh, like comb, comb markings, and apparently they use that to actually comb his bristles up here to keep them in tip-top condition. And these extra bristles make it like a, an even bigger, wider gape, helping him to catch moths while on the wing. Yeah, you can see um, the nice white markings on the tail feathers there as well. So yeah, this bird has come back and forward from Africa. Was it three times since I handled it last? Incredible. And now it's time for him to go free? Yeah, yeah. I'll probably I'll just put him down on the ground and they take a little bit of time to adjust to the, the darkness and then he'll be off. Second one. And this one uh, actually feels a lot softer in the hands. So I'm guessing at the moment it's probably a young bird and it's nice downy young plumage. I'm just going to squeeze the, uh, the ring on just gently and then get the pliers ready. Okay, so um, it's done. Females don't have the white spots, or not pronounced white spots, so we just have to check. Um, although it hasn't got white spots, we need, still need to check on its age. And the way we do that, we're looking at the, the secondary feathers here, and we're looking for any arrow markings. So which and, ones are um, the secondaries? This is uh, okay. the set of feathers just down here. You've got the, lo the long primary feathers, and then it moves into the secondaries. And at the tips of all those feathers, you'll see you've got these little pointy arrow markings. And that's and they're all uniform, they're all the same. No different ages of feathers there. So this is a bird that was hatched this year. So how long ago will this one have left the nest, do you know? Um, probably within the last four to six weeks. Be hanging around, feeding up, and ready to uh, get off to Africa with a wing of 186. Expect this one will weigh a little bit less than the last one. Hasn't got half as much fat on him. And if I blow up his jumper, you can see that breastbone it was quite visible there. He hasn't got a great deal of uh, muscle on him yet. He hasn't been flying around as much as the adults. He needs a bit more fat on him before he can get all the way to Africa. There you go, look at that lovely gape. Those bristles aren't as pronounced yet either, actually. Uh, So whereabouts do nightjars breed? Heathland areas. Lowland, okay. Yeah. So plenty of 
plenty of which we've got in this area of Dorset, but this bird um, isn't necessarily from Dorset. It could have come in from anywhere in um, anywhere in sort of this um, north northern Europe, basically. It could have come down, migrated down to southern England before popping over the channel. 